I, re I remember the moment when I decided to move to Portland, and it was when I walked into Powell's. <laughs> and I remember the last moment, which is that unfortunately I had to move to San Francisco and into an apartment. So uh, we brought in all of, not all of our books, but it was like 20 boxes of books. And so I feel like I'm here in my living room visiting my books. <laughs> um, before I start, I also just want to say how much I appreciate you all being here, um, because I know there are a lot of people who may think they've heard enough about September 11, 2001, by October 19, 2007. Um, but I, I really feel we are just getting around to talking about so much that's happened in America since that day. Um, individual. Americans may have responded courageously and reasonably, but the nation as a whole uh, responded to the attacks in ways that, uh, when we reflect on it, are truly strange and disturbing uh, and, and beg for explanation. Uh, let me give you a, a few examples of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, you, you may remember that uh, politicians and pundits at the time were spouting uh, all this vigilante rhetoric about how we should smoke them out of their holes and shoot them between the eyes. Uh, that, that last came out of a, a one commentator in New York. Uh, John Wayne kept coming up. Uh, there were all, and there were all these references to how the war on terror was like uh, returning to our Indian wars. Uh, the media um, was also claiming that the attacks were going to bring back traditional family arrangements. Now, you may not recall um, some of this because it, it washed over us at the time with very little inspection. Um, but there was this insistence that 9-11 uh, was going to bring on a marriage boom, a baby boom, a, a return to traditional domesticity. Even feminism uh, was said to be deep-sixed by the attacks. I, I actually had a, an early warning of this last one. Um, on the very afternoon of 9-11, I was sitting home like everybody else, uh, you know, numbly watching the towers fall over and over on TV when my phone rang. And it was a reporter doing a reaction story. Uh, mostly, though, he wanted uh, he seemed quite eager to tell me what his reaction was. <laughs> well, he said, this sure pushes feminism off the map. Now, this was all not only baffling, but not how other countries who've suffered terrorist attacks, uh, like England or Spain, uh, responded. It seemed peculiar to us as a nation. Uh, so tonight, I don't want to talk to you about what 9-11 did to Americans. I want to talk to you about what 9-11 revealed about America. Because I came to feel that underlying our reactions was a cultural mythology um, that we have barely begun to reckon with. And it holds a key to a number of mysteries. For instance, why, when the hijackers attacked uh, the symbols of American commercial and military power, um, were we acting as if they had targeted our home and a hearth? Why, when we've been attacked by men who hate Western women's liberation, uh, were some of our pundits uh, so eager to usher in the end of, of feminism? And why, when we've been called on to fight a new kind of war in the global age, uh, were our leaders uh, reaching for their coonskin caps and reenacting some kind of Wild West drama? Why, with all the crises we had to deal with in this period, was there this huge to-do about the rescue of one quote-unquote girl, Private Jessica Lynch? I want to talk to you about all of these aspects, but um, first I want to start with another question. And to answer it, I'm going to take a brief foray into American history. Perhaps the most mysterious of the contradictions was this one. We kept hearing over and over that these attacks were something that had ne never happened to us before. 
America, we kept hearing, is not a place that's vulnerable to assault on home soil. And in recent times, that's true. But if we actually consider America's real history, we realize something very important. This has happened to us before, over and over. And its happening was essential to the formation of the American character. For the first 200 years, the main feature of colonial American life was being attacked on quote unquote home soil. Now, granted, this was home soil that Anglo settlers had taken from the native population. <laughs> Nevertheless, from the settlers' uh, tunnel vision point of view, um, it felt as if they were being attacked by people who they regarded and demonized as non-Christian, non-white, quote unquote, terrorists, a term that was actually employed at the time. These were attacks um, that involved villages, communities. They were aimed at the home and hearth. These were also deeply traumatic attacks for both sides. Uh, King Philip's War, which uh, began in 1675, was the formative confrontation between white settlers and New England tribes. It stands to this day as, per capita, America's deadliest war. In one year, one of every 10 men of military age in the Massachusetts Bay Colony was killed. Uh, Two thirds of New England towns uh, were attacked. More than half of them were destroyed. The settlers were forced to retreat nearly to the coast. Um, the economy was in ruins. And the society fell into what came to be known as the Great Crisis. Uh, Indian suffer suffering and casualties, of course, were even you know, were far worse. The bitterness unleashed on both sides would initiate a harrowing series of conflicts that would drag on well into the 18th century. Those conflicts reduced early settlers to a state of perpetual insecurity, uh, what frontier historian Richard Slotkin called, quote, an atmosphere of terror. Now, how did we as a nation respond in the years to come to this foundational experience of terror? Largely by covering it up with the creation of a cultural myth. Beginning in the 18th century and, and culminating in the Victorian era, our culture, its journalists, politicians, novelists, artists, concocted a fantasy that post-revolutionary America desperately wanted to believe, a myth of ourselves as triumphal rescuers, the myth of American invincibility. Now, in talking about this, I am not talking about some sort of recovered memory syndrome. Uh, we didn't remember the original trauma. Uh, given Americans' pension for history, we barely remember what happened yesterday, <laughs> unless it involves Britney Spears. Um, <laughs> what I'm talking about is a tangible cultural heritage, uh, a worldview whose instructions are handed down in everything from newspaper accounts to novels to movie scripts. And furthermore, um, I'm talking about a myth that doesn't belong necessarily to one sex or another. Both men and women buy into it. But thanks to its history, it has a gender aspect. And this is because our early experience of terror was deeply humiliating to the settler community. Time and again, leaders, militias, husbands were not able to protect families in frontier towns, nor to rescue them 